Hello, losers, cool beans, and other lovable weirdos. I've sat on my leg too long, and it is partially asleep. But welcome to another little horror game. This week we are checking out Location Without, which is a short horror game based around trying to solve a mystery with mysterious police case files. Ooh. I am but a pumpkin. Do do do. Hello, not a pumpkin anymore. I have a mug that does not have coffee, but I mean a mug is close enough. I feel like I feel like a detective now, right? Right? Let's let's start solving mysteries. February 13th, 1994. Ooh. Okay. RFPD. I just want it to be Raccoon Forest Police Department. <laughs> Left click hold, space inspect. I don't think we're getting much. Is there anything in this mug? Toggle view. Okay. We got a nice little window here. Oh, hey, I can, I can. Ah, we got a. The ultimate working from home setup. Sleep work, sleep work. Got it. I'm a sentient chair, guys. I'm a detective chair. Oh, I'd watch that detective show. <laughs> Which means if I can hit that snooze button means you're going to activate at some point. Phone. Oh boy. <laughs> no way, I want to go through these in order, don't I? The picture. Family. Friend. Friend. <laughs> we got the power button. Awesome. I'm a pro. Poster. Can't look at. Glow in the dark ink. Okay. Locked box. Key lock division. That. Hmm. Lamp. Safe. Okay. Cool, cool. Case file number one. We'll start, you know, at the start. Thank you very much. Oh boy. Thank you for having it in text. Case number redacted. The first of the first, 1982. Officer Brian Jeff Monsell incident. Todd Bridges was inexplicably found in the bathroom of his local residence in Lander, Wyoming. His face was unexplainably completely missing with no signs of any injury or incision marks that could imply surgery. There is currently no explanation as to how this could, in any way, be possible. Ooh, we're getting right in there with the weird, weird cases. Like, I know the description is literally mysterious police cases, but I didn't think we'd start with straight up impossible. Yeah, okay, Todd Bridges, age 23, occupation not applicable, place of birth, land Wyoming, birth date, 11th, 12th, 1958. Or is that the twelfth? Is that the twelfth of the eleventh? I suppose. Is for America and your dates. <laughs> Time of death: one twelve p.m. Criminal record: unpaid parking ticket. Note: pictures of Todd attached. Many of us in the office are scared due to the inexplicable nature of this case. I'm not one to buy into the superstition floating around. 
However, this could very well be unlike anything anyone has ever seen before, so it's probably best this doesn't become too public. Yeah, don't scare the public and all that, but now I'm curious what the uh, superstition floating around is. Do you think it's attached to some urban legends or something? I'm just curious where case file number two is. <clears throat> case file number three is dated 080193. It's like a de they're like a decade apart. Surrender Philly. Incident. Connor Ward was discovered on the floor of his residency, completely missing his eyes and mouth. In the place of these areas, there is standard, unharmed human flesh. There is no discernible cause of death or apparent damage to the body. Victim details. Connor Ward, age 21, occupation, bartender. Place of birth, Solvang, California. Birth date. Okay, the, yeah, the 18th of February, 72... Time of death, 1.32 p.m. Criminal record, mild assault. Notes, just like the previous two cases, I honestly didn't want to believe they were real. Picture attached, looking back over this document, I've noticed a lot of strangely placed dots. I have no memory of putting them there myself. I suppose they should be disregarded. Yeah, that is a bunch of randomly placed dots around the time of death. Um, the, around the case number that's been redacted. Around the date. Seems to be to do with the numbers. I'm not seeing them anywhere else. Interesting. Okay, this is already very, like, decade, like... Almost 10 years between two very similar unexplainable cases. And now we have the mystery of the random dots on the page. Fascinating. Also the ambient sound effects that I'm pretty sure are just meant to be me, me chilling at my desk. Keep freaking me out in the background because I'm just like, is that meant to be a floorboard behind me? I don't know. <laughs> like nothing's even happened yet and I'm like... All right, database, I need a password. Psychobin is scheduled passwords. Uh, don't you just love when people forget about the recycle bin when they're trying to delete their very important things? <clears throat> well, today is the 13th, so... H-G-T-W-N. 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 I have a memory, guys. File code. <sighs> Making me do work. <laughs> uh, hmm. Can't wait for the VCR to talk to us. Clipboard. Ooh, database code description key. Yes. We, as representatives of the Redwood Falls Police Department. You mean this isn't Raccoon Forests? How sad. Redwood Falls still sounds nice, though. Typically use a standardized database of codes for ease of access to our immense digital database of case-related media. However, there are a few cases that require a code to be provided without knowledge of its encryption. According to the RFPD staff census, the codes related to secretive media sources must be presented to fellow employees under the guise that it is a standard, unchanged code. It is the duty of only designated officers to understand which codes are encrypted and how to decrypt said codes via the following method. Maybe I'm missing something else. Wait, you're 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 not a weird creepy painting now. Yeah. 
Yep, weird things are happening in the background. Got it. Got it. I refuse to believe this picture doesn't have any significance. Could it just be to make us feel like a person with connections and, you know, a life, a family, whatever? Sure, maybe, but do you have a clue? Did I miss something? Are you serious? <laughs> yes, beforehand I, mu I must have had it like the perfect angle to just not notice the very subtle key taped to the pack. Oh, don't worry guys, all your hidden spare keys are safe from me. <laughs> I'd only be writing your plushies anyway, so y y y it's fine, I probably already have the plushies. Because, you know, I'd have my own plushies. We have the same plushies. If we had plushies. I don't know. I don't know. Just, 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 just use the key. Use the key. What's in the box? What's in the box? Hey, are you case file number two? You are case file number two. I wondered where you were. Why were you locked in the box? Interesting. 3rd of February, 1985. Okay, so that's a few years after the first case. Sir Rep. Audrey Miller. Incident. Similarly to the Bridges case, the victim was discovered dead without an inherent cause. Susan was found on her bedroom floor, missing her right eye and left eyebrow. That's very specific. Did whatever is doing this get interrupted? There are signs of distress before death as her right hand is grasping onto her face. Inexplicably, however, her thumb, pointer, middle, and ring fingers are all lodged within her face. Okay. Just getting Cloverfield Paradox Wall vibes. Because apparently that's the first image that comes to mind, not, not anything else that could work, no. Removal proved to be possible, revealing strange indentations on the face coated with an outer layer of skin. However, some of the skin was torn from said removal. Hmm. Victim details Susan Richards, age 19, gas station clerk, born Gillette, Wyoming. Birth date. 5th of the 1st, 1966, time of death, 3.58 p.m., criminal record, not applicable. Notes. The fact that the Bridges case was not an isolated incident has completely reopened investigations and scared reasonability out of the office. The entire situation has warped my perception of reality, and I haven't been sleeping. We all hope there is an explanation for this. I have been thinking in numbers. A photo of Susan's corpse is available on the new police database under the code CWX23B. The standard decryption method should work. Okay, so maybe the dots and dashes in the other two are related to something else or like require another puzzle piece to figure them out. This is more like how the briefing thing said, that, you know, we'd be given a code, and then we work out that code, and it would be fine. A little trial and error, and I've come to the conclusion that you are always multiplying by two. It is not a, oh, so if it's multiplied by two, it's this. It's, uh, I think that's, that's the, that's the encryption. Always multiplying by two. I did have to look up a little bit what the heck the V to R thing was about, and it kind of half makes sense. It, it, the, the, again, if it's the multiplying by two, <laughs> it's not its own thing. It's still related to multiplying by two and then counting through the alphabet again. This is why I would not be a professional code decryptor, mostly for my own sanity. Um, I'm not going to turn this into math class, and I'm not going to show you all my working out, so I will see you with the code. Uh, this wasn't the day to record this. My brain thought I was going to play a little horror game. My brain was like, I can use a monster. And I'm like, how about a horror game instead, brain? And my brain's just here like, you bitch. <laughs> you make me think. And I'm like, it's good for us, brain. And my brain's just like, glares. Goes back into its virtual bed. <laughs> 
Okay, so what I got from that was capital F, small t, capital V, 7, 9, and a lowercase d. So let's see if I can count. I can count. Susan Case, is this the picture that would have been in the case file if this if case file 2 was like the other cases and had it in there? Oh, that good old 90s loading images. Okay. Hand just... Yeah, no left eye. No... Oh, sorry, no right eye, no left eye. Rude! I'm working here. I'm trying to work here. And you just... I don't even... I can't leave my desk. How do I fix this? <laughs> uh... Spindly long fingers in your long arms. Uh, there's the part where you're kind of horrifying and I love you from a horrifying design perspective. And then there's the point where you also remind me of a glitched, super stretched out sim from The Sims. Which is a little, um... <laughs> don't get me wrong, that's a terrifying thing to see, but also... So do I have a face anymore? No, no I do not have a face anymore. Ending B. There are multiple endings? There are multiple endings? <gasps> How do I get other endings? How do I get other endings? Oh. I refuse to look at the door. I refuse to look at the door. Because I want to test. Like, come on, we had a stick blank sticky note and the invisible ink in the room, and I don't think that's a coincidence. Yeah, rotation. Safe combination. Date on first file. I'm not looking. Ominous lamp. not just the uh the uh my brain's like just the underlined one's like no one one nine nineteen eighty two probably just nineteen eighty two but I'm just like I'm not acknowledging your presence sir not at all that is not a s one nine eight two it is Got the safe. A revolver. Load the bullet. Load the bullet.
I took too long. Okay, I'm going straight for the safe. Barrel, bullet, barrel, hammer. <laughs> Your fate is sealed. Is it? Is it? Ending C. Curious about the string of numbers on that. Nope, didn't make a difference. Was it ever really there? I survive. Ending A. Okay. Ending A, B, and C. I'd imagine there's probably more endings relating to the phone. And whenever the number is, and whenever the painting goes creepy, I'm guessing by the actual credits that ending A is the uh, ideal, intended, hopeful ending. More than I expected. I don't know. Whenever there's police files, I was thinking maybe there's a serial killer. Maybe I'm in a haunted police station. Didn't expect faceless, causing creature thingy. Didn't expect it to begin with, but I was like, that's cool, because, you know, across horror and sci-fi, like, we love a good little faceless creature, don't we? And then it actually showed up. It actually showed up. It took my face. I would like that back, thank you very much. I hope you have a sliced day, and that it is better than our friendly, slightly dead faceless police guy but you know what i'm going with ending a ending a is the true ending he lives if you enjoyed this feel free to check out the channel do various horror short games longer games if i stumble upon it i'll probably play it goodbye